Okay, welcome to part three in our series on forms and Power Automate, specifically working with file content or file upload questions. And in this video, we're going to focus specifically on getting the uploaded file content. Um, and again, so far we, we've talked about connecting the form to the flow. We've talked about getting the response data and understanding the format that that's in. Uh, but we now have to consider actually getting the files themselves. And just as a refresher, when we are working with personal forms, those files are going to be saved into the OneDrive of the person who created the form. Uh, in the case of a group form, the files are saved into the documents library in that group's SharePoint team site. Um, in either case, it's either going to be under My Files in OneDrive or Documents in SharePoint, and then a folder called Apps, a folder called Microsoft Forms, a folder with the name of the form, and a folder with the title of the question. So we've got this very defined path of where those files are going to go. Um, but what we need to do is take those files and do other things with them, whether that's sending them as an email attachment or saving them somewhere else, uh, maybe tagging them with some metadata, etc. Alright, so let's first talk, when we're talking about files, there are it's important to remember that there are really two parts to a file uh, or two components that we need to consider. There are, is the file metadata, which is things like the file name, the path, the identifier, and then there's the file content, which is the actual, um, if it's a text document, it's the text that's in that file. If it's an Excel spreadsheet, it's the workbooks and the worksheets that make up that file. Um, and when you're working with files in Power Automate, you really need to account for both of those because in most actions that involve working with files, if you're uh, creating a file or uh, attaching a file to an item or to an email, it's going to ask for the file name and the file content. Um, so you need to make sure you have both of those before you can do those things. Now the file metadata is really, for the most part, the, the, the critical parts of it, like the file name, are included in the form response data or the, the question response data. So when we parsed that JSON of the uh, upload, the file upload question response, we got a property called name, which is the name of that file. And one important thing to know about this is that when files are attached through forms, they will always have something to identify who submitted that file. Uh, if you're recording names in your form, then, or, you know, in the settings for the form or the record name box is checked, then it'll put the name of that person uh, at the end of the file name. So if I had a form set up that way and I upload the file, it would say, you know, a file called document one, it'll say document one underscore Chad Keeley. If you are not recording names, then it will simply say anonymous. So it would say document one underscore anonymous. Bottom line is that identifier is there. And you have the option, if you're okay with that file, with that identifier being in there, leave it there. Just use that file name as it is. Um, however, you can also replace the file name or create your own file name uh, or modify it in some way. So you could use some text manipulation to you know, split it up on, on the underscore character so you can leave off that first, uh, the, the name of the submitter. Or if you have a specific file naming convention that you need to use, then you can generate that file name within the flow to use. Uh, I'm not going to go into all those scenarios, just to understand that you can, you, I'm going to show you using the name as it is, but you have the option in Power Automate to modify that name or replace it if you'd like. Now the file contents are not part of that form response. In other words, when the form response is submitted and we get that data, it's just basically telling you where the file is. It's not giving you the file itself. So what we need to use or what we need to do is take uh, and use the appropriate action in Power Automate and some identifier to get the contents of the file that had been uploaded. And if we remember, we got some things in that parse JSON like the file name and something called an ID. Now let's jump over 
and take a look at our personal flow. So this is the personal form flow where again, the file was saved to OneDrive. So logically we would assume, okay, we'll use the OneDrive get file content to get the contents of that file. So I'll type hit new step here and get file content. And we'll select the OneDrive for business get file content action. And for the unique identifier of the file, let's just let's try this ID because ID usually means unique identifier. Not always, but usually. So let's hit save and let's test that out. And I'll just test it with a previous run of the flow. Fantastic. So we've got now the file content of our file and it's actually returned in guess what a JSON array containing properties of content type to identify what type of file it is and then the content itself which is you know the encoded contents of the file kind of self-explanatory but good to revisit now let's jump over to our group form now because the group form is uh, or files sub submitted to the group form uploaded to that group form are going into the SharePoint site. You probably would assume that you need to make or need to use a SharePoint action to get that file. Makes sense. The file sitting in SharePoint. Why wouldn't you use the SharePoint action? So I'll select get file content and this time we'll select the SharePoint action and we need to tell it what address it is or what you know which site it is and then we need the file identifier and again we'll we'll use that ID because makes sense and hit save and test this out okay so it's running and it failed and the reason it failed is it says file not found. And the reason for that is that this file identifier doesn't make sense to SharePoint. So the SharePoint connector doesn't understand what this file identifier is and how to use it to get that file. Now, just to let's just take a look at this is the SharePoint get file content action where it's asking for a site address and a file identifier. And if we go over and edit our OneDrive, the get file content for OneDrive just has one field. It's just asking for the file. Now the reason for that is that this OneDrive connector or the OneDrive actions know that it's going to connect to the OneDrive of whoever's connection is being used here. So if it's my OneDrive, it doesn't I don't have to tell it which OneDrive to go to. It's going to my OneDrive. Whereas in the SharePoint realm, we have to tell it which SharePoint site to go to. Now, how do we, it, it took a while for me to figure this out, but basically what we need to do is not use the SharePoint action here, but use the OneDrive action, but somehow tell it which OneDrive to go to. And this is something I fought with for a long time because people had you know kept calling SharePoint a group OneDrive. It's not, but in this sense it kind of is because each SharePoint site has an identifier that equates to the identifier used by OneDrive and in particular it's that drive ID from the parse JSON. So what I need to do, let's get rid of this file SharePoint get file content because we know it's not going to work and we'll instead use the OneDrive content, OneDrive get file content. Now, for the unique identifier, we need to tell it which drive to go to. Because if I if I simply say, you know, just put in the identifier, it's going to try to go to my OneDrive. And this the ID of this file doesn't exist in my OneDrive because it's not. It's in SharePoint. But I can use this drive ID to say, hey, go to this drive ID, which is the SharePoint site. And then I need a dot. And then I need the ID of the file. So but this this is think of this first section as equating to that SharePoint site field 
in the SharePoint get file content action and this taking the place of the file identifier. So if I hit save and we test this and we'll rerun that one that failed. Bingo! So that worked for us. So that got us the file. It knew how to get to that because we gave it the drive ID and it knew which, knew which file to get because we gave it the ID. Um, so it's just important when you're working with these group forms, you're still going to use the OneDrive connection or OneDrive action to get the file content, but you need to be sure to include that drive ID parameter so that it knows which, you know, for lack of a better term, OneDrive, which drive to go to to get it. Um, and why this is, my only guess is that personal forms came first, so it kind of made sense that when they were developing this file upload capability that they were going to return the data that is returned or, or that this sort of corresponds to the OneDrive notation of how files are stored as opposed to the SharePoint notation of how files are stored. Um, Yes, it's confusing, but the bottom line is that once you know the secret of using the OneDrive connector um, to get the content and to use that drive ID and the ID, you're golden. So now you've, you're able to get that file content. Now, to put this all together, what you're going to do next um, with that file, so, so now you've got the file metadata, you've got the names in your parse JSON output, You've got the file contents by getting those files. What do you want to do with them? And this really depends on a couple of things. Number one, how many files do you have? If it's just one file that's being attached to a form, you can very easily just save that to do whatever you want. Save it to a SharePoint site, save it to uh, attach it to a list item in SharePoint, you name it. Um, you can do that. But really, what do you want or need to do with them? It, it, again, I can't tell you that. That's your requirements, your specifications. Uh, I will, however, say if you're working with just one or two files, it's pretty easy to just add those actions. And yes, they might get thrown into a loop because of, remember that JSON, the parse JSON output is an array. So whatever you want to do, it's going to operate through the array as you know in an apply to each fashion but if you want to work with those files as a collection so maybe putting them all you know saving them up and then putting them all into one email you need to get them as an array or need to create an array to do that um, so that's what we're going to show and you might not need to do this again I'm trying to cover as many bases as possible but uh, this is just, in my mind, um, the most efficient way to do it. So, again, when you're sending an email attachment, you can directly specify, well, I didn't say this yet, but in certain email actions, you can actually identify an array because the attachments, a an email can have one attachment or 10 or 100. Uh, you can specify that in an array format, but we need to get those files into an array. Now, in the other cases where you're creating a file or saving it to SharePoint or OneDrive or attaching it to a list item, you can't do that from using the array syntax, but you can basically create another apply to each loop that will run for each item in that array. So what we're going to show here is just getting the files into that array so that then you can take the next step of using that array. All right. Uh, now, there is a specific format to this array that you need to create. Basically, it needs to, and again, this is JSON format. Um, so we need the curly braces to open and close the JSON object. We need a name property, and we need a property called content bytes. And it does need to be in this specific format. So name, capital N, in double quotes, colon, the name from your parse JSON output, and then content bytes with a capital B and a capital C, in double quotes, etc. So let's just jump over to our group form flow and 
see how we do that. Now, the first thing we need to do is if you've not worked with vari variables in Power Automate, you, um, I'll let you in on a secret, you need to declare or initialize that variable uh, at the root level of your flow. So you can't do declare a uh, initialize the variable rather inside of an apply to each loop or inside of a scope or inside of a any other kind of container. Uh, you need to actually go to the, the, the top base root level, whatever you want to call it, of your flow and add an action there to initialize a variable. I'll just type in initialize, select initialize variable, and I'm going to call this var files and make it a, an array type. So it's a variable of type array and always a good practice to rename your action. So I'm going to call this initialize variable var files. There we go. Now, once we have that file, that variable initialized, we can use another action which is append to variable to add items to it. So within this apply to each loop, which again remember is working on each item in the array that's returned by this parse JSON action. Um, so we're, we're for each of those items that's returned, we're getting the file content. Now we want to add them to the variable. So I'm going to say append to variable and, and it's important to select append to array variable because arrays are lists and if you select string variable you won't see your variable listed here so append to array variable var files and this is where I'm going to type in that format so uh, curly brace and the line spacing is not required I'm just doing this for clarity so name colon and then we're going to select from our dynamic content the name and then we need a comma double quote content bytes and in this this is where we're going to plug in that file content there and then uh, closing curly brace and there we go so now I'm just going to save this and we'll test it. And ran successfully. So now, um, what I probably should have done is put a, put a uh, compose statement to show the what was the output of that array variable after everything had been appended to it. We'll do that in a future video because this case we only have one file so it kind of wouldn't show you much. Um, so that's basically where we're going to stop for today. So now we've parsed the JSON, we've gotten the file content, we've put it into this array variable. What do we do with that? Uh, and again this is where you could go in 10 different directions or more. Whether you want to send this as an email or attach it to a list item or create the file somewhere in SharePoint. So I'm going to show each of those. Um, and again, I can't show every possibility, but I'll show those, you know, a handful of them in the next video. So tune in for that. And uh, hopefully this is useful to you. If you have any questions, throw them into the comments down below. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks and have a great day.